Hi, my name is Methat El Masri. In today's video, I will show you how to add more data fields to the standard users and roles database. I'm referring to the identity framework in ASP.NET. And the idea here is when you're registering a user, you're asked to enter your email address and the password. Suppose you want to register a user with other properties like say the first name, the last name, the street, the city, the province, etc, etc, etc. In today's demo, we will extend that simply with first name and last name, but the principles are the same. I just want to keep it simple. And also we will learn how to extend the roles table. The roles table typically contains only the name of the role. In other words, admin, guest, member, staff, etc. You may want to enter some other property, for example, the creation date. So this is what we're going to do in today's video. To start with, we're going to create a .NET new Razor Pages application and we're going to use individual authentication. And the output directory is going to be extend users roles. Now let's go into this new directory and let us just start this application and see what's in it. Now, if I register a user here, it's going to ask me for the email, password and confirm password. I may want to capture more data about the user. And as I said, in this demo, we're going to learn how do we capture first name and last name. So I will close this page and I'll terminate the web server. And let's get started. We're going to open up this application in VS Code. First thing I want to do is to create a new folder called models. And in this new folder, I'm going to create two classes, a class for the user, which I'm going to call X user and another class for the extended role, which I will call X role. Let me start with the user. So I'm going to open up X user and replace the X user class with this class. And as you can see here, the X user class inherits from the built in identity user class. And this means that I have to import this namespace. Microsoft ASP.NET Core identity. I'm going to add these two new properties, first name and last name. Next, I will open up the X user class. And just like what I did with this class here. So with the extra class, we're going to get that to inherit from the identity role class. Let me resolve the namespace. And for this one, what we're going to do is we're going to call the constructor of the base class and we're going to add a property just like we did here. I'm going to copy this and add a similar property down here which is just going to be of type date time. And we're going to call this created date. The next thing is this namespace here. I would like to put it in the pages view imports so that it's available to all the views. So I'm just going to say using and I'll paste this here. The next thing we want to do is to go to the application DB context, which is the database context class, which is right here. The application DB context class has to inherit from identity DB context of type X user X role and string. So let us resolve these. And that's it as far as the application DB context is concerned. The next thing I'd like to do, which is here a bonus, is that I want to seed my database users table and roles table with some sample seed data. To do that, I'm going to go into the data folder and add an extension method to the model builder class. So I'm going to add a new class here and I'm going to call this the model builder extension class. Let me replace 
the class definition with this code and I will resolve these namespaces first. This is an extension method that belongs to the model builder class. So we have to declare a static method and pass the model builder object as an argument using the keyword this. The first thing we do is we're declaring a password that is going to be used by all the users and this is just for demo purposes. Then we're going to instantiate a password hasher object that is going to be used to hash the passwords. We're going to start by creating two roles, the admin role and notice that this is one of the extended properties of the role of the identity role object. And once we create an X role object with a name and create a date, we're going to set the normalized name property to be the name converted to uppercase. We do the same thing for the member role. We're going to take the admin role and the member role and add them to a list of X role objects, then add the roles to the database. Next, we seed some users and notice that these two properties are the extended properties. So we're going to create this first user with the email, email confirmed, first name, last name. The normalized username would be the username converted to uppercase. Normalized email is the email converted to uppercase. And the password hash uses this password hasher object to hash the password for this admin user and the password. We do the same thing for another user called mm at mm.mm and it's got a first name and a last name. We're going to take these two users, the admin user and the member users, and add them to a user list and then add it to the database. Next we see the user roles, which is an association of a user with a role. So in this case we're associating the first user, which is aa at aa.aa with the admin role. And here we associate the second user, which is mm at mm.mm with the member role, and we add it to the database. With the seed method ready to go, we need to call it from someplace so that the data is seeded. And the most convenient place to call the seed method is within the application DB context class and the on model creating method. This on model creating method takes a model builder object. First of all, we pass that on to the base class. And then this builder object now has an extension method called seed, which is what we did right here. This is the seed method. It's an extension method for the model builder object. So we can call the seed method from the builder object. Going into the program.cs file, we have this statement here, which is add default identity that registers the identity user object. So it's available using dependency injection for the rest of the application. Now, this statement needs to be replaced by another statement that also registers the identity role object. The identity user object in our application is replaced by X user and the identity role object is replaced by X role. So I'm going to comment this statement out and we'll replace it with another statement that looks like this. We're going to, instead of add default identity, we're going to add identity, which operates on the X user and X role classes, which are our custom classes. These are options. In this case, we want the maximum length for keys to be 128. This is where registering the X role object. So it's available through dependency injection in our application. Every place in our application where there's any reference to identity user, we have to change it to X user. Now there is one place where there's a reference to identity user and its pages, shared and login partial which is this one here. You can see that over here, it's injecting sign-in manager of type identity user. We have to change this to X user and also this one here to X user. Now we can go ahead and carry out entity framework migrations, but because we have changed the model, it is 
much better if we delete the original migrations folder here and also delete this app.db, which is an SQL light database. I'm going to delete both of these, the migrations folder and the app.db database so that I can create my own migrations from scratch. So the first step is to add migrations. That command is .NET EF migrations add M1 and the output directory is going to be data slash migrations. When I run this, it's going to create a migrations folder under data and here it is. And there's a file here that contains the commands that create the database and create the tables. If you go down in this code, you will see that down here, we're actually inserting data for the roles and inserting data for the users. And finally, we're also inserting data to associate users with roles. We're not going to change this because we're going to run it in the next command, which is .NET EF database update. This is what's going to create the tables in the database. Now to prove that these users and the roles have indeed been created, we can run our app with .NET watch. Now let me log in with one of the accounts that I created, which is aa at aa.aa .aa and the password and log in. That seems to work. Let me log out and log in with the other user, which is mm at mm.mm with the password. And that also works. So let me log out and try something else. We have roles. And remember that there is a role for the member and a role for the admin. Let's assume that we want only admins to see the privacy page. So what I can do is go to the privacy page, which is this one here. And let me put an authorize attribute here. Let's say that this is only for users that belong to the admin role. So I can type in roles here equals to, and I'll put admin. Of course, I need to resolve the namespace for authorize. And that would be this. So having done that, let me try to go to privacy. And now it says you have to log in. So let me log in as member. And of course, members are not allowed, but let's see what happens. It says access denied. So let me log out and log in as the administrator. And I'm allowed into the page. And in fact, the administrator can go to all pages. But we still have a problem because if I log out and I try to register, we still cannot enter first name and last name in our registration page. This is what we're trying to achieve. We created these properties for the users, which is first name and last name, but we have no place to register. So if you look around for this page account register, you will not find it. It is baked into the assembly. Like if you look, go through all the pages that we have, there is no register page. If you go under areas here, also there is no register page. So where is the register page? The reality is that the register page is baked into the identity framework assembly. So if you want to change any of these identity framework pages, you have to expose these pages and in essence, get them out of the assembly and put them in the code so that you can change it. So that's the next step that we're going to do. I'm going to stop the web server for the next part of our journey here. We need to have some more packages that are needed for the things we're about to do. And these packages are these ones here. We need to get the code generation package. We need the entity framework core design package, and we need entity framework core SQL server package. You might ask, why do we need SQL Server if we're using SQLite? Well, in order to expose the identity framework for whatever reason, you need this package, otherwise it won't work. So I'm going to take these commands and run them in the root of my application so that we can get 
these packages into our application. There is one other tool that we need and if you don't have it already, you need to install it. And this tool is called the .NET ASP Code Generator. This command installs it globally on your computer. If you have it and you don't have the latest version, then you can replace the word install with update. Since I have this on my computer, but I'm not sure whether or not I have the latest version, I can just update it by pasting this command .NET tool update minus G .NET ASP.NET code generator. And this tells me that it was reinstalled with the latest version, so it hasn't really done anything, but it's a good idea always to get the latest version of this utility. With this utility, I'm going to run a command that's going to expose for me the registration page and the login page. And this would be the command .NET ASP.NET Code Generator, which is the tool that I just installed and updated. You have to use the identity keyword here and the files that I want to surface from the assembly are the account register, account login, account register confirmation and the database context file is application db context. So I'm going to take this and run it in the root of my application. This will expose for us these razor pages which will enable us to modify them so that we can have first name and last name show up in the registration page. Now, what this command did was under areas, we now have a folder called account. And there you are, you've got these files that were exposed from the assembly. We have login, we have register and register confirmation. Now we're going to do most of the work in register CSHTML. CS in this file here. The first thing we want to do is if you go down here, you will see there's a class called input model. And this is pretty much like the view model that is shown on the register page. It's used to input the email, the password and confirm password. We want to add two more properties here, one for first name and the other for last name. So we're going to add this here at the bottom. It doesn't really matter where you put it as long as you put it in the input model. But we just added these two properties. The first name property, it's required. It's of type data type text and the maximum size is 50 characters and the minimum size is two characters. Also the last name, it's of type data type text. It's also required and it's got a restriction on the size, which is minimum two characters, maximum 50 characters. And of course, the display name for first name is just first space name. And the display for the last name is last space name. Having done that, there's another area that we need to change. And it is this on post async method. We're going to comment this out and replace it with our own logic for creating a user. And our logic would be something like this. We're going to create an X user object because this is our extended user. The username will come from the input email. The email also comes from the input email. The first name comes from the input first name and the last name comes from the input last name. So these are our two extended properties for the user class. Next, we go to the UI itself and the UI is this register.cshtml right here. We need to add input fields for our first name and last name. This is what it's going to look like. Over here, we have an input field for first name and a label for first name. And this is a validation for first name. And the same is done for the last name. Now, when we run that code generator, it added some unnecessary code, which we need to delete from program.cs. So let's go to program.cs and you will see that there is some stuff there that we do not need. And it was inserted for us by the code generator. And it is this line of code, which we, if you remember, replaced with this. In fact, I did comment this out saying that we have to replace default identity with this. 
So over here we have again some duplicate code that we don't need. I'm going to comment this out. At this stage, we are ready to check out our application. So let me go in here and let us run our application with .NET Watch. Now let's register. And there we are. We have our first name, last name added to the UI. So I'm going to enter a first name like Bob Lee. Email is bob at lee.com and the password is going to be entered here and again the confirm password and let's register it says hello bob at lee.com let me log out and log in again just to make sure that it's working so bob at lee.com and the password let's log in and yay it's working now just to prove that the data that we entered especially the first name and the last name is in the database, we can have a peek at the database. So with a VS Code extension that I installed, which is this one here, SQLite Explore and Query SQL Database, I can actually look into this app.db by choosing Open Database. And when I do that, I get this tab here and I can expand app.db. Let's start with the roles. So I'm going to come here show table of the roles and here it is this is what we added as an extra property to the roles now let's look at the users so i'm going to come here show table and these are the two properties we added first name last name and we in fact entered these mike moore and adam atkins when we seeded the data and bob lee was added at the very end i'm glad you came this far in the video if you liked it please give it the thumbs up. Thanks and see you in my next video.